and welcome to the LWVH Annual Warrant Review. My name is Kathy Schutzlein, and I'm the chair of the steering committee for the League of Women Voters of Hingham. The League is proud to be a nonpartisan political organization. We work to increase understanding of public policy issues, and we influence policy through our studies, member consensus, and advocacy. This is the 10th year that the League has provided the warrant review, and it's one of the ways the League demonstrates its commitment to providing local citizens with the information they need to play an informed and active role in government. To review the warrant article, as well as the most recent copy of the Advisory Committee's warrant article status summary, please go to the town's website where you will find these available under town meeting documents. If you're new to town, our league has produced the Citizen's Guide to Open Town Meeting booklet, which is available on our league website under town meeting. This document is newly updated this year and is a practical way to learn about the legislative practice of your open town meeting. Last year in 2021, Hingham voters supported a league-sponsored warrant article calling for amending the town's general bylaws to include gender-neutral terms. The decision to sponsor this petition was grounded in the league's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in principle and in practice. By supporting this article, Hingham joined more than 90 other Massachusetts communities that had already made similar changes. And now I'd like to welcome Advisory Chair Julie Straley, who will be making tonight's presentation. Julie, thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us. Hello, my name is Julie Straley, and I am the chair of the Advisory Committee for the Town of Hingham. And it is my pleasure to present the 2022 Annual Town Meeting Warrant Review. As a past president of the League of Women Voters of Hingham, I am especially happy and proud to be able to contribute in this way to this important organization. Topics that I will cover are review of the proposed fiscal year 2023 budget. I'll provide information about the advisory committee, the warrant article process and calendar, and then I will review the warrant articles which will come before 2022 annual town meeting. The advisory committee is a 15 member committee appointed by the town moderator. We can serve up to two three year terms. We have two roles. We serve as the town's finance committee and we also serve as a study or research committee for town meeting. We dig into budgets and articles in advance to make recommendations. For town meeting, advisory committee recommends a budget and studies and votes on all the proposed articles. And then for the town meeting warrant, writes a comment which is, describes the question asked by the article and gives a recommended motion to be voted on. Advisory's recommended motion is the motion made on the floor of town meeting. Ultimately, the decision is up to the town meeting voters. The advisory committee is responsible for presenting a balanced budget to the town to vote at annual town meeting. We assign ADCOM liaisons to each department and they analyze the numbers with the department heads. The department heads come to advisory committee meetings for the hearings. We keep in mind key financial metrics that are contained in our town financial policy. For the municipal budget, advisory studies and recommends each department's salaries and expense requests. For the school budget, an advisory committee education subcommittee, ACES, studies the school budget requests, but in the end recommends a total budget amount for the school budget. And by law, the school department and school committee decide how to spend that budget allocation. Capital outlay committee, working in conjunction with the municipal DARP departments and the school committee, is responsible for determining which capital assets are required and recommend a five-year schedule of capital expenditures. Capital assets considered by the capital outlay committee typically have a useful life of more than five years and cost more than $15,000 or are otherwise classified as fixed assets on the town's financial statements. After the capital outlay committee makes its recommendations to the select board and advisory, in the end, advisory makes the final capital recommendations to town meeting. Ideally, the advisory committee's budget recommendation reflects a consensus balancing affordable costs with acceptable service levels among the advisory committee, the originating group, and the select board. The advisory committee looks at all aspects of the budget process, including results and goals of the departments, and along with both current and future year financial impacts. Considerations during the budget process. 
departmental budget trends and goal achievement, impact of the request on service levels, impact of additional funding requests beyond level services, impact of the request on overall financial health, including the bond rating and the town's financial policy. We discuss unassigned fund balance and its importance. Unassigned fund balance is the town's rainy day or savings fund. At the close of the last fiscal year, unassigned fund balance was at almost 31% of total annual expenditures, a healthy savings that is well in excess of the target of 16 to 20% as laid out in the town's financial policy. I will discuss the use of unassigned fund balance later in this presentation, but I would like to note here that the percentage of fund balance in FY21 was 25% and that the increase of over 5% from over to the next year was attributable in part to two temporary factors, federal COVID reimbursements of $2.9 million and a $1.49 million payback from the Weir River water system for expenses incurred during the acquisition. Capital outlay funds in FY22 were 2.62% within the target range, and debt service fluctuates from year to year. In FY22, it was just under the target range. Any additional requests to the budget are considered at the end of the budget process. I'd like to discuss the FY22 budget for a minute to help put the FY23 budget process in context. Prior to the pandemic, the town had been experiencing increasing budget pressure from expenditure growth exceeding revenue growth. Then in the creation of the FY22 budget, the town chose to add several new services and positions to the town budget, funded in large part by one-time monies. These new services and positions were especially important to implement a recovery budget necessary to assist our student population in recovering from the staggering academic and social emotional losses caused by the pandemic. In addition to the usual revenue sources, the FY22 budget relied on $5 million in one-time funds coming from several sources, $2.4 million from unassigned fund balance and $2.6 million in federal stimulus funds. New positions added to the FY22 budget were 32 FTEs full-time equivalent positions in the schools and four FTEs in municipal departments. I'd like to highlight some parts of the advisory committee's report to annual town meeting in 2021. This report is located in the warrant and there were some parts that I would like to underscore in this report. Even before the arrival of the pandemic, balancing the budget was a challenge. As has been true for some time, revenue growth had not been keeping in pace with increases in expenses needed to maintain level services and meet demands for new services. The advisory committee believes that the town would benefit from a long-term financial management plan, including an examination of capital priorities and service levels, all the while keeping in mind the impact on taxpayers and rating agencies. As part of these efforts, consideration should be given to potential new revenue sources, including whether a future Proposition 2.5 operational override may be appropriate. Although an override can provide revenue for additional services, particularly for the education budget, the allure of such new revenue must be balanced against the permanent impact of the resulting tax increase on the average homeowner. ADCOM believes that the formation of an override study group at this time would be useful in addressing whether an override for the FY23 budget is necessary, and if so, in what amount. In August 2021, in response to the increasing budget pressures that were exacerbated by the global COVID-19 pandemic, the town administrator established a sustainable budget task force to develop options to facilitate a sustainable five-year financial forecast for the town for fiscal years 2023 through 2027. The final report of the Sustainable Budget Task Force was completed on January 31st, 2022, and is located on the Town of Hingham's website under the Select Board's page. I highly recommend reading this report. It is 128 pages, but it is an incredibly important resource of all things to do with the town's budget it can explain decisions made in the past and details what decisions lie ahead for the town going forward. In looking to the 23 budget process, the Sustainable Budget Task Force recommended that to close the FY23 budget deficit, to consider using remaining ARPA federal stimulus funds, use funds from an existing stabilization fund, 
and a modest amount of any necessary excess unassigned fund balance to close the budget deficit in FY23. And then for FY24, the task force recommended the consideration of proposing a potential override to maintain or grow services. The task force did not recommend an operational override for FY23 because of these factors. One, the school department is conducting a strategic planning process and staffing audit, which is currently still in progress. It will greatly inform school operations and budget requests going forward starting in FY24. Number two, Hingham Public Schools leadership will change significantly in the next several months, including the hiring of a new superintendent and new director of business and support services. Both new hires will need time to learn the roles and assess district needs. And number three, there is an adequate time for the community to consider and assess the implication of an override. New growth projections have slowed considerably. Much of the new growth over the last 10 years was driven by residential development in North Hingham, in and around the shipyard, as well as through expansion at Linden Ponds. Now estimates are closer to an annual $650,000 growth, which represents the typical smaller scale residential and commercial property improvements, such as home and business renovations and additions that the town experiences in any given year. At the same time, the rate of expense growth is speeding up, which creates pressure and challenges in reaching a balanced budget. This year's proposed budget is $139.8 million. That represents a 2.5% increase from FY22. In general, each year, 75 to 80% of the budget represents personnel costs. So looking at the proportions, the education request is 45%, which is a net of a one-time decrease of $1.3 million in out-of-district tuitions for special education. Benefits are at 11%, debt service at 4%. Municipal services such as public safety, public works, general government, human services, culture and recreation represent about 26% of the budget. Please note that this is a proposed budget and this number includes about $1.6 million in total additional requests combined from the municipal and school sides. And there's no decision yet about the recommendation of any of these requests. So now, what is the status of the FY23 budget process? As of February 18th, 2022, there is a $1.56 million budget deficit. That amount includes the application of these factors, federal stimulus funds, stabilization funds, adjusted local receipts, and released overlay. On March 4th, a new forecast will come out. It'll be updated with new information, such as the health insurance rates, and we expect the deficit amount to be reduced. Then the advisory committee will need to address the additional requests and decide if their approvals merit the use of other potential federal funds or unassigned fund balance. Again, these would be budget measures which do not represent funds that would be available to use in FY24 or future budgets. So a long-term solution to address structural budget deficits will be critical. The budget review of the select board is ongoing and all budgets are expected to be voted by mid-March. And the budget review of the advisory committee is ongoing as well and it will, we will need to vote all budgets by the end of March. As with every year, the advisory committee is responsible to present a balanced budget to town meeting. So now let's turn from budgets and talk about the warrant articles. So in any given year, article sponsors can be the select board, planning board, community preservation committee, other town boards or departments, and also citizens petitions. Deadlines for submitting warrant articles are December 1st for any zoning bylaw change articles and January 20th for all other articles. These proposed articles are reviewed first by town council and the town administrator's office and then they go forward through the hearing and vote process before the planning board for zoning articles, the select board, and the advisory committee. A final review of the articles will be done by the town administrator's office, town council, and the moderator. That will happen in late March. Then the warrant will be sent to the printer and mailed to voters ahead of town meeting. This year, 36 warrant articles were filed. Two have already been withdrawn and we may have other changes and that number is compared to 28 warrant articles last year. 
The select board typically hears and votes on articles before the advisory committee does, and those hearings and votes are meant to inform the advisory committee's discussion and votes. So per the town bylaw, town meeting is ordinarily the fourth Monday in April, but in 2022, the target date is Saturday, April 30th, outside with two rain dates. The warrant or notice of town meeting must be delivered to citizens at least seven days before town meeting. And then at the bottom of this slide, you can see that there is sort of a chart that lays out the month by month process of the budget schedule and the warrant schedule. So each year, annual town meeting is asked a series of questions that we like to call perennial articles because they come up every year. So the first is the Hannah Lincoln Whiting Fund. This article appoints a trustee for this small fund. Assume liability for the Department of Conservation and Recreation, that the town assumes the liability for any work that the DCR does in town. Reports of various town committees, this article asks to accept the reports prepared by the volunteer committees in the town. Salaries of certain town officers, this article appropriates the funds to pay the salaries of certain town officers. Disbursement of electric light department receipts, Hingham Municipal Lighting Plant pays an annual pilot, a payment in lieu of taxes, a minimum of $450,000, but the amount this year is $500,000. The building department revolving fund allows the town to use building department permit fees to pay for some building department staff inspections. The Department of Elder Services revolving fund allows the use of fees to pay for senior center programs. The acceptance of easements allows the select board to accept easements, which is typical for utility work. So then there's a set of articles this year that do not involve funding. One of them is the five-year lease of special education school transportation vehicles. This article gives the school department the authority to enter into a five-year lease for transportation vehicles. Mass General Laws prevents the town from entering into contracts for more than three years without town meeting approval. The reduction of speed limits. The traffic committee seeks to establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour within the thickly settled town business districts that are not state highway. And this is an area around and including Hingham Square. Transfer care, custody, and control of a portion of transfer station site to HMLP is an article for the Hingham Municipal Lighting Plant. They have determined that they need to build a new substation and the proposed location is in a, in a corner of the Hingham Transfer Station land area. This transfer is the first step to transfer control of this area to HMLP so that the substation project can go before the local permitting boards and then could be constructed at that location in the future. Modify size of long range waste disposal and recycling committee. This would change the committee size from nine volunteers to seven and extend the term length of service from two to three years, which is a practice in line with other town committees. And then finally, we have rescind authorized but unissued debt. Periodically, the town rescinds unused and no longer necessary borrowing authorizations, which is consistent with good accounting practices. The unused borrowing authorization on 10 projects was a total of $6.4 million and is no longer necessary. And this motion will close out financing authorizations on these projects. And the conditions which produced these amounts were projected projects completed under budget prior to borrowing the full amount authorized, redesigned scope, and a project not proceeding. Each year, there's an article to approve the 2022 Community Preservation Act funded projects recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. The Local Community Preservation Act tax is a surcharge of 1.5% of real property taxes, plus a state match. The Community Preservation Committee started the deliberation process this year with a budget of $1.76 million. That includes local tax revenue from FY22 of $1.2 million and a state grant of $463,000. It also includes $97,000 of funds returned to the CPC from projects that either were completed under budget or canceled. Debt payments of $738,000 were applied for two previously approved projects, the purchase of Laner Land in 2016 and the purchase of the Benjamin Lincoln House in 2020. And the four projects for this year consideration a town meeting, $20,000 to be used by the CPC for administrative purposes, $166,840 to be used by South Shore Habitat for Humanity 
to create two new affordable single family homes on Whiting Street. $289,815 to be used by the Hingham Recreation Commission to reconstruct the hockey court at Cronin Field and $550,000 to be used by the Country Club Management Committee for construction of a new town pool at the South Shore Country Club. So other articles that we have before us on town meeting this year involve funding. So every year we have the budgets. We don't have a final budget recommendation yet. The sources of funds include the tax levy and state funding, federal stimulus aid, stabilization fund, and unrestricted fund balance if deemed necessary. The report of the personnel board is for salary increases, benefits, changes, and job reclassifications for any municipal employees who are not part of collective bargaining or employees who are covered by an agreement which have not yet concluded. Transfer from the stabilization fund, this article usually is a perennial disbursement of stabilization funds used to reduce the tax rate. Typically, it's a $175,000 payout each year. One of the recommendations of the Sustainable Budget Task Force is to apply the balance of this fund to help balance the FY23 budget, and that amount would be $2.1 million. Transfer funds to the reserve fund. This article is included each year in case the existing reserve fund is not adequate to cover unbudgeted and unanticipated expenses for the balance of the current fiscal year. The specific amount will be reported at town meeting. The municipal waterways fund, the town needs to have a waterways fund in order to be eligible for any state or federal grants for the harbor or any coastal area. Under the state law, the Waterways Fund receives revenue of 50% of all municipal boat excise taxes, all mooring permit fees, and any additional sums that the Commonwealth or the federal government may provide. A town may also deposit additional amounts into the fund, and this article seeks to deposit into the fund the remaining 50% of the boat excise taxes, revenues generated from any parking license fee, and revenues generated by the Harbor Master's Office, such as late fees or fines. This fund will provide a partial funding source for the future harbor-related expenses such as dredging and the improvement for, of the harbor or the wharves. So we have a number of articles this year that require funding and many of them require borrowing, which is a two-thirds vote at town meeting for approval. The South Shore Country Club maintenance facility funds. This article requests an amount up to $815,000 in additional funds for the design and construction of a new maintenance facility for the South Shore Country Club to supplement funding appropriated at 2020 annual town meeting. This is due to supply chain and inflation issues. Revenue from golf operations are projected to be enough for the South Shore Country Club to repay the borrowing that the town undertakes on behalf of this project. The South Shore Country Club pool, this article requests up to $8 million to construct at a new town pool at the South Shore Country Club. The town pool was closed indefinitely in 2019 due to structural weaknesses. The funding source is a debt exclusion, a temporary tax in increase excluded from the limits of Prop 2.5. The town would pay debt service, not the South Shore Country Club Enterprise Fund. The vote requires a two-thirds majority at town meeting, and then this question will be placed on the local election ballot, requiring a majority affirmative vote. The Public Safety Facility Pre-Construction Costs article seeks funding to complete the construction documents for the construction of a new public safety facility to be located on Lincoln Street, Route 3A. This facility would replace the fire station located on North Street and replace the entire police station, which is currently located at Town Hall. It is anticipated that the request for full construction costs of this facility will be requested at a special town meeting this fall. Foster school funds for pre-construction costs. The 2017 School Building Committee has been working through the Massachusetts School Building Authority process to design a new foster elementary school. This article seeks up to $3.1 million of interim funding to continue the design and construction documents for this project. And like the public safety facility, it is anticipated that the request for full construction costs of this new school will be requested at a special town meeting this fall. PRS Windows Project Funding Source. This article seeks to correct the funding source for the same article which came before and was approved by 2021 annual town meeting. 
The funding for this project to replace windows at Plymouth River Elementary School is intended to be borrowing within the levy, and the article last year incorrectly attributed the funding source to a debt exclusion. The request is for $3.9 million, but that amount is expected to be significantly offset by funding from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, mitigation funding, and application of unspent funds from prior school projects. This year, there are two articles for the Weir River water system. One is to appropriate the bond premium and excess bond proceeds. It asks the town to appropriate these funds borrowed to finance the acquisition of Weir River water system to be used on certain important water system capital projects. These funds include $7 million bond premium and $112,000 in excess bond proceeds received in the 2020 financing by the town. The funds will be used for three main purposes, design and construction of a new water storage tank in Hull, a complete rehabilitation work on the Turkey Hill water tank, and other capital improvements related to these projects. The other water company article is for capital projects. This article seeks funding of a total of $5.4 million for capital reinvestment in the water company. This amount represents capital investments of $2.7 million for 2021 and $2.7 million for 2022. The town's financial model for the purchase of the water company included an annual capital investment of $2.7 million for water mains and other major capital items within the system. This annual amount is projected to increase by 5% every three years starting in FY24, though future investment amounts are subject to adjustment. The town intends to borrow the money to fund this investment amount, but debt service, the repayment, will have no impact on taxpayers or the town budget as it will be repaid by water ratepayers via the Water Company Enterprise Fund. So we have a couple more funding articles. On the next slide, we have two articles that anticipate the use of unassigned fund balance as a source. Going back to earlier in my presentation, I discussed unassigned fund balance and how as of June 30th, 2021, the percent of unassigned fund balance to total annual expenditure was 30.85%, well above the range of 16 to 20% recommended by the town's financial policy. Typically, an average use of unassigned fund balance to fund warrant articles each year is about $2 million, but given the growth in unassigned fund balance and the capital needs represented by these articles, the recommendation is to appropriate $3 million this year. There have been discussions to set aside unassigned fund balance to mitigate the tax impact of the borrowing necessary to fund the large capital projects planned for a special town meeting this fall but there is no decision made on that yet. So the first of these two articles is the fire department large capital needs. In addition to regular capital outlay budget recommended for FY23, this article seeks $2.3 million for five large capital needs for the fire department, including a new fire engine pumper truck, replacement of roofs at stations one and three, the replacement of HVAC system at station one, and replacement of gutters trim and portico at station one. Note, these stations are not the station on North Street. The station on North Street is slated for replacement with the construction of a public safety facility. The other article is a rehab of the tennis courts at Hingham High School. The school committee requests $864,000 to reconstruct the six tennis courts at the high school, which will be funded through the use of unassigned fund balance. And then the next two articles are recommendations from the Sustainable Budget Task Force final report in the effort to raise revenue. The select board recently reopened the warrant for annual town meeting to insert the following two articles. The first is a real estate transfer tax. This article seeks approval from town meeting for the town to petition the state legislature to allow the town to impose a real estate transfer tax upon the sale of a property. This tax would be a 1% fee on the purchase price of the real estate, the responsibility of the buyer, and an exempt amount is equal to 80% of the median assessed value of the property. This article will have hearings before the select board and advisory committee in the coming weeks. And the other article is to transfer borrowed but unspent funds. There are four previously funded school projects that were completed under budget. 
so the unspent funds of these projects can be transferred to help pay the costs of a new capital project. So this $1.1 million would be applied to the PRS Windows project. And then as we have each year, there are zoning bylaws, and we have four of them. One of them is the gender neutral and other term revisions. This article is a complement to the citizens petition article from 2021 annual town meeting, thanks to the League of Women Voters of Hingham, which updated the town's general bylaws so that the language of those bylaws is gender neutral. This article seeks to do the same kind of update to the town's zoning bylaws, but in addition will delete the term grandfathered use wherever it appears and insert in its place pre-existing use. The next article is requirements for accessory uses. This article seeks to update and clarify the def definitions of residential accessory uses. Special permits and site plan review article would amend some sections of the zoning bylaws to consolidate and clarify the special permit application and approval process. This update includes an addition of provisions of a tree preservation bylaw, which is the next and final zoning bylaw. The citizens petition for tree preservation, while the tree preservation study committee ultimately did not refer its own tree preservation bylaw article to 2022 annual town meeting, the chair of that committee filed their own citizens petition to encourage the preservation and protection of sizable trees on portions of private property during significant demolition and or development activity. The planning board has rolled most of the provisions of this citizen's petition into the special permits and site plan review article, but was not able to include provisions for the creation of a tree bank, an account established for the deposit of contributions in lieu of tree replanting. Funds deposited into this account would be used for the purpose of buying, planting, maintaining, and protecting trees in the town. The planning board is still conducting hearings on all of these zoning bylaw amendments, and then these articles will go before the advisory committee for consideration. So we've come to an end of all the discussion of the warrant, both the budget and the articles. I'd like to refer you to some resources to keep current on the process. First of all, the Town of Hingham website has an events calendar and it lists hearing dates for various boards and committees. Also, the Sustainable Budget Task Force final report and other supporting documents and the financial modeling tool are on the town's website under the select board page. And the advisory committee has its own page on the town website. It has the warrant article status summary, the WAS document, which tells you where the articles are in the process. It has a list of all the current warrant articles, a forecast for the five-year financial forecast, a calendar, and the Citizen's Guide to Participating in Town Meeting. Advisory committee meetings are still being all conducted online via Zoom, as well as the Select Board and Planning Board, so I encourage voters to tune in and learn more about the articles and budget over the coming weeks. These meetings are also recorded and available for replay on Harbor Media's YouTube page. The warrant needs to be complete by March 24th and sent to the printer so that it can then be mailed to voters ahead of annual town meeting. If you have any questions, you can contact me through the advisory committee's email address, which is on the town's website on the advisory committee page. Thank you for your time and interest in town meeting. As league members well know, democracy is not a spectator sport, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for your presentation and for your service to the town. We look forward to seeing all of you at open town meeting. This has been a presentation by the League of Women Voters of Hingham. We invite you to view our website for more information, and we hope that you will consider joining the League. Thank you.